All right, this lecture is going to talk about automatic differentiation in Julia. One of the best parts about of Julia is through their type system uh, and generic programming model that essentially any code you write can be differentiated in gradients. Um, Jacobians can be computed to, on functions. So what is automatic differentiation? Well, first let's just think of our computer program as just a composition of functions, right? So we have a function that operates on input, on some input, and then perhaps uh, that generates an output that another function calls, uh, and that generates an output that another function calls, and this you know, goes on until you know, the ultimate output of the program occurs. So we can, if we want to com you know, say compute a derivative of the output with respect to the input, then we can decompose or use the chain rule to decompose uh, this function, and I just create some intermediate uh, variables here, w o w one, w two, w three, and then you know run the chain rule on this you know differentiation of the output with respect to the input looks something like this, and it turns out the computer can actually do this for us, uh, and there's certain diff different implementations, um, forward mode and reverse mode. Uh, the details of the implementations are kind of beyond the scope of this class. But, you know, basically you can, you can just remember that, you know, forward mode is the easiest one to implement and, and, you know, is the most generality in practice and it has a low memory footprint. However, reverse mode uh, requires about half the operations uh, of forward AD, but it can be certainly more difficult to implement and also has a larger uh, memory footprint. So um, there's several packages that can do both. We're going to talk about the forward mode package, which is called forwarddiff.jl. This is a, a third-party package. You have to install it through the package manager if you want to use it in Julia. But let's just start with uh, you know some simple uh, operations of how you would use it. So we'll start with just a simple function. Define a function three times x squared. Of course, we know this has an analytic derivative that we can compute easily. So the derivative of this is six times x. So any any, anything we put in for x, the derivative of it would be six times that, right? So we can define this function in Julia, 3x squared, like so. And then the forward diff uh, syntax for computing the derivative of it is simply to pass in the function, the callable f, and the value of x where you want to compute the derivative, right? And so in this case, uh, the value is 3. 3 times 6 is 18. And so you can see this computes the derivative correctly. We can also do this for in-place functions. So, for example, in, in this case, um, we're going to have a function, and, and of course, the, uh, in Julia, the idiomatic way to have in-place functions is to write a um, exclamation point. So in this case, we're going to pass in a vector y, and then we're going to store two functions of two function evaluations of x, right? So 3 times x squared, it's the same as the one before. And also in the second component of y, we're going to store x to the fourth, okay? So we can actually compute the derivative of this. Uh, again, basically it'll compute the derivative of each of these functions. Um, and uh, well, I guess first let me show you how you call this function, of course. So now we're going to pass in a vector y. We, we have to initialize that vector. In this case, we'll just do it with zeros. And if we pass in y for the value of 3, we get the functional evaluation, right? So again, these are the evaluated functions uh, at those two locations, right? So at 3, 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, and 3 to the fourth is 81, right? So uh, this is the functional evaluation. So then we can also then just pass that in to compute the derivatives at those locations as well, right? So we pass in now f exclamation point. Uh, the in-place function, the array y, where we're going to store the values of the derivatives now, and the value of x, which would, with respect to we want to compute the derivative, right? So in this case, uh, we get these, uh, these two, and you can verify that those are, in fact, the right numbers. Um, just additional syntax, you can also pass in an array dy, where you want to store the derivatives. Uh, so in this case, um, we have this derivative exclamation point that implies that this is an in-place derivative operation where we're going to store the outputs of the derivative in dy. We're going to also pass in uh, 
the in place operation for f x i'm sorry for f uh, and we're also storing the functional evaluation of f in y um, and and then evaluating all of those derivatives at three right so you, you do get the same values of the derivatives just this time they're automatically stored in place in the array dy so that kind of shows you the syntax uh, syntax variations for using in place callable functions as well as using the in place derivative operation. We can compute gradients the same way, right? So in this case, we have a function that, uh, in this case, uh, the function is g and it takes a vector valued argument, right? So in this case, there's two components of x. And so then the gradient of g, uh, the, vec the gradient is the derivative of g with respect to x1 and the derivative of x of g with respect to x2, right? And so just this is just defining g and showing how you would call it with a vector argument. So this is a function, you know, the, the um, function produces a scalar. Um, and you see that here. Uh, so we, we put in a vector argument, it returns a scalar. So if we wanted to compute the gradient of g at x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 2, then you get this result here. This is another example. I define another function that takes a second argument p, but p is just going to be the coefficients of the equation, right? So in this case, to reproduce the same functionality as g, if we put in 3 for p1 and 1 for p2, will basically have the exact same equation as g. And so, uh, and I'm verifying that, that if you call h at x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to 2, p1 equal to 3, p2 equal to 1, then you do in fact get 19 back. So if you want to use this type of function, so we have a function of multiple arguments, but we only want to compute the gradient with respect to x, what we have to do is we have to use an anonymous function uh, in the callable location. So in this case, we're creating an anonymous function, leaving x uh, to be the, you know, so th this leaves a function that's only a function of x, where now the parameters have been substituted as constants. And then we can compute that again at the location 1, 2 to get these, um, this answer here. So finally, we can also do Jacobians in the same way. Um, so in this case, now I have a function that takes a vector x, and returns a vector, right? So then the Jacobian is this type of operation. Again, if I, um, if I just, well, just demonstrating the function call. So if I put in two values for x1 and x2, then I get uh, these two values in return, and then I can call the Jacobian uh, like so, right? So passing in that along with the values of x, and then I get a matrix as a result, right? Computing this, this result. For both gradient and Jacobian, even though I'm not showing them, there's all the same in-place variations that I showed for derivative. So it can take in-place functions. Uh, it can also do the operation, uh, store the derivative values in place as well uh, by using the exclamation point variations of both gradient and function. Just to let you know, there's a couple of other AD packages in Julia, Zygote, uh, which is, is the kind of standard reverse mode AD, and it does, it, you know, source to source transformation in the compiler, which means it's very efficient. So it actually takes the source code and when it's compiled uh, and it, it generates source code that to compute the derivatives in reverse mode AD. And also be on the lookout for Diffractor JL, which is the next generation package. Both Zygote and uh, Diffractor JL have a very similar API as to forward diff. So the way you actually use and call these functions are very similar uh, in these libraries.